Hi, I'm Renarda Clanton Moyd. I'm a communication specialist with the Cumberland County Schools and your host of Get Connected. During this monthly show, we highlight numerous educational topics that face today's student, educator, and parent in the Cumberland County Schools. Now, educators in the school system have long realized the direct correlation between academic success and the arts. As a result, the Cumberland County Schools Arts Education Program offers a variety of learning opportunities for students in grades kindergarten through 12th. Now after this break, two art educators from our school system will join us to discuss this and much more on this edition of Get Connected. It's fun to sing. Zippity zip zip zin zin zin. Dance and play music every day. Yeah, go for it! Doing something artistic inspires creativity and helps you succeed in school and life. Hooray! Play music, paint, and dance together as a family. Come on, team! Blast off with the arts. Blast off! For 10 ways to add the arts into your life, visit americansforthearts.org. Open a book, you can explore new lands, make new friends, and discover new adventures. There are amazing possibilities when you open your mind to reading. Explore new worlds. Read. Again, thanks for joining us for this edition of Get Connected, where we're talking with Cumberland County Schools Arts Education Supervisor, Lydia Stewart, and the dance teacher at Jackford High School, Katie Swain. Lydia, Katie, welcome. Uh, it's so nice to be here. Hey. Again. Uh, again. again, I know. I'm glad to have you back. You know, we'll have to make this, you know, like every year. You, that sounds good, because we always have a lot of things happening in arts education. Okay, well, let's jump in and let's talk about arts education. Um, some would say that arts are slowly disappearing from school systems around the country. But I'm glad that it's firm that arts are here in Cumberland County and our students are getting involved. Correct? Uh, that is it's very correct. And I, I'd like to tell you why. Okay. Um, I've been here working in this position for about 21 years. And one of the very nice things that I have to report is that um, arts education is here very solidly because the people of Cumberland County want it to be here. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, the parents, the students, um, the community members, time and time again, uh, you know, we might have economic problems or different things and people always want the arts to be here and to be strong. Our um, administrations change, our board members change and always it stays the same because I think they really reflect what the people of Cumberland County want. Mm -hmm. So um, hats off to Cumberland County right. for understanding the importance of arts education and making sure each year that the things that need to happen, happen mm -hmm. to keep this program strong for their children and their grandchildren. Now you say they understand the importance of arts education. Exactly why um, is arts, or are the arts important for our students, for any child? Well, I think, Katie, you know, we could talk all day on that. <laughs> okay. Katie, you have um, arts education, I mean, it helps educate the whole child. It doesn't just focus on the core subjects. It helps them think creatively and work through uh, problem solving in all areas. And they get to be creative at the same time. So it, it's an education of the whole child, and arts brings that. Okay. I think she said that uh, very concisely because the arts uh, really do address the needs mm -hmm. of the total child. And if you think back, um, the arts really address those things we enjoyed most when we were young children, all the 
the dramatic play and oh, the yeah. drawing and acting things out and making music with pots and pans and mm -hmm. the arts uh, really address the developmental needs of young children and as children progress it uh, really addresses their creative and artistic needs. Mm -hmm. so. you, when we were in the green room earlier you mm -hmm. were talking you were giving us the scientific <laughs> definition of the synapse and all that. So talk with us a little bit about brain development and arts education. Please. Well, um, <clears throat> I don't have my studies to cite, but I can say some things in general. Uh, I think the thing that's been most exciting for me as an arts professional uh, is the amount of research that's been uh, done mm -hmm. in the last 20 years. There's so many studies that really prove the impact of arts education, whether you're uh, playing an instrument or drawing, or dancing, or being an actor. So many things about the arts really um, bring out uh, and develop the neural processes in, the, you know, in terms of learning about brain research. So uh, I really encourage parents. Uh, it's very easy, you just Google Impact Arts Education, mm -hmm. and you can find all kinds of extremely wonderful studies that have been done that really prove the point of how completely necessary uh, the arts are for, for children. Okay. Now what has been the history of arts education in the Cumberland County Schools? Well, I can speak to 21 years and you can hear. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, yeah, 11 years. I've completed 11 years here, so. Wow. It's, um, it's grown. It's gotten huge. As, as far as dance is concerned, I've watched positions be added, which is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Especially with the economic times. But uh, it's grown. Dance has gotten huge. Not only just adding positions in different schools, but the enrollment of the children. The students are, you know, they're signing up for it. They want to take it. They see how much, I mean, it's not just fun. They learn so much stuff uh, physically, how to take mm -hmm. care of their body and how to learn how to dance and how to create movement and put together choreography. It's a whole spectrum of stuff and it's really, it's grown in 11 years. And well, you know what, I'm, I'm sure our pop culture that's really helped, yes. you know, so right. you think you can dance, yeah. um, you know, American Idol, just a lot of the shows that we're watching now, you know, really focus Dancing with the Stars. Okay, that's one of my favorites. But, you know. A couple of years ago, we celebrated our 35th anniversary. I remember that. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. When we celebrated, I'm going to change the subject off of dance for a minute. We celebrated our 35th anniversary of the orchestra program, mm -hmm. and we researched the history of the, or of the orchestra program. And I want to give a um, uh, nod, a nod to the um, Arts Council of Fayetteville, Cumberland County, helped to fund the original, or uh, the original orchestra program through a grant mm -hmm. that they tried, they said, let's try something new. They were able to fund a, um, an orchestra teacher. And from that tiny start, um, this huge orchestra program has grown from just a, a part-time grant to 22 teachers who serve every school in Cumberland County. And we have a, you know, a Cumberland County Youth Orchestra, a middle school youth orchestra. We do an all-county orchestra every year. We have orchestra in every school. We have ensembles at every high school and middle school. Big, it's grown. Mm -hmm. But I did want to give that nod to the Arts Council because the Arts Council is a good partner and a good friend to, mm -hmm. arts, to arts education here in Cumberland County. They've helped us in so many ways. When we wanted to try something new, um, they've helped to fund some of those those uh, initiatives. That's good. Uh, but your original question was about the history of mm -hmm. uh, arts education and in Cumberland County. how it's evolved and changed. And it sounds like it truly has. Well, there was a big program before I came. Okay. But I have to say, um, it has grown by leaps and bounds in the 21 years I've been here in terms of what I've witnessed. But there, there have been wonderful people in the past, and I wish I had known you were going to ask. I would have brought more research with well, me. Well, that's but all right. That's all right. Some of our former superintendents have been so instrumental in uh, providing the funding for different programs, um, and and without that vision, we could not be what we are today. So sometimes you have to be a risk taker if you know what you're doing is a good thing. And um, we've had some really great heroes in the past. That's good. Now, when, and, and in the present, so. All right, well, when we talk about the evolution of um, the program, 
what are some of the programs that are available to our students now? We know dance, but now can a student participate in dance at elementary level, middle and high? Um, I wish they could. <laughs> uh, we have two elementary um, uh, positions in dance, and then the rest are mainly all in the high schools. In the high schools, Now okay. those two uh, elementary positions are at our two arts-focused schools, and that's Mary MacArthur mm -hmm. A-plus School mm -hmm. and Eastover Central, which is an arts-focused elementary school. Okay. And then all of the others are uh, at high schools. High schools. Mm -hmm. Now, what are the other arts that we offer? Okay. <laughs> okay, we've how, how long was the program? <laughs> <laughs> how long have we got? We have band. We have, we have band. Well, we and that, have... that was, when I was coming along, that's pretty, I mean, I remember chorus and band were, that was it. Well, you know, if you always think about the arts encompass four basic programs. You okay. have music, you have theater arts, you have visual arts, and you have dance. Okay. But the interesting, dance is pretty straightforward. In public school, we're talking about, for the most part, modern dance, for the most part. But we also teach children about the history of dance, different types of dance. So dance is pretty straightforward. Theater arts is pretty straightforward. You're going to learn theater arts. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I want to come back to talk about the theater program in just a minute. And then the visual arts is exactly what you think it is. Painting, drawing, sketching, all of that. But then you come to music. And Cumley County has something to be very proud of here. Our music program really splits into three disciplines. We have choral music, okay. we have band, mm -hmm. instrumental music, and we also have orchestra. So when, in many school systems, you don't have that. Mm -hmm. In fact, most school systems in North Carolina do not have an orchestra program. They do not have the big marching bands that we have. They do not have the very developed uh, middle middle school choral and orchestra and band programs. Mm -hmm. So our music program, if a child is really interested in music, uh, they will start in kindergarten having a general music class all the way through elementary school. Mm -hmm. Then with middle school they can select either choral music, band, or orchestra and then they can and learn how to play their instrument or learn about their voice part and then they have the highest level in high school to really um, develop their ensemble participation. So it's a, a full program. Now I said I want, I'm sorry I'm talking too much. <laughs> <laughs> Katie's like go right ahead, go right ahead. But you know a lot of times people in the community they just see our bands out on the football fields. On the field, football fields you know? and in parades and that's what you kind of, you know. Yeah, everybody loves our marching bands because mm -hmm. they are pretty wonderful and fabulous. Mm -hmm. But they also are pretty wonderful and fabulous concert bands. They can hold their own playing music, as evidenced by, I believe it was last year, that all of our uh, bands that participated in a, um, the rating schedule for, that they do with their professional organization, they all came home with superiors, and I'm very right, proud of that. Right, right. So we, we march well, but we play well, too. Yeah, and that's always good to see. I know at our graduations this past year, it was great to hear the concert bands. Right. And, you know, just to hear that fullness of sound and, and enjoy that as well. So that's a good thing. And I asked, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to circle back to theater for a minute. Um, well, you know what? Wait a minute. I hate okay. to interrupt you, Lydia, right. because before, because I know you're going to tell us some good ah. stuff about theater, but we, yes. we've got to go to a break, okay? All right, all right. Sit tight. Don't go anywhere, okay? All right. Stay tuned for more Get Connected. Sounds like you could use some Van Gogurt. It's fortified with arts-rich nutrients to improve your math and reading skills. Catch! Van Gogurt, thanks. So what's the deal with your ear? Always with the ear, huh? Feed your kids the arts. For 10 simple ways to learn how, visit americansforthearts.org. I'm lucky. Let me help you with that. I get to do something I love. It has nothing to do with touchdowns or titles. Everybody bring it in. I get to play a part in the life of someone just starting out. How many of you think homework is just as important as teamwork? I help keep kids in school. Good. And that's the name of the game. My name is LaDainian Thomason. I don't just wear the shirt. I live it. Give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live United. I'm starving. 
Harvey, what's for breakfast? Guten Tag! Johannes Brahms! I bring you arts enriched raisin brahms, fortified with increased test scores and creative problem solving skills. It's good! And good for you. Bobby? Susie? Don't worry, that's just the power of the arts! <laughs> <laughs> Feed your kids the arts. For 10 simple ways to learn how, visit americansforthearts.org. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Get Connected. Our guests are Cumberland County Schools Arts Education Supervisor, Lydia Stewart, and the dance teacher at Jack Britt High School, Katie Swain. And we're discussing the direct correlation between academic success and the arts, and the need for arts. We really need the arts. Okay, I know I'm being a bit dramatic, we'll but I did that. You. Thank you, my daughter. <laughs> we'll agree to that, won't we? Right. Which kind of segues us into our discussion about drama and that right. piece, the theatrical arts. The, the original question was uh, sort of how, what was the history of the arts in Cumberland County? And that's a whole show in and of itself. And as I said, there were several very important people along the way. And I don't want to mention anyone because yeah. I'm sure I'll forget somebody. Exactly. But we'll come back and do that because it's a really interesting subject. Um, the, all the things that people have done that have made us what we are today. But I did, as I was sort of doing this roundup of the arts, the different art forms, mm -hmm. I did want to mention the fact, two things. I did want to mention the fact that our theater arts program is growing by leaps and bounds. And we have uh, good solid theater programs at all of our high schools. And if parents want to go out and see some really good shows, just you know, keep a watch. And, and uh, there have been a lot of really great shows that, you know, in the past few years. Right and um, good entertainment and um, good good performances. But there was another program that I did not mention, and I okay. don't want to miss this, because that is our uh, forensics program. Right. Which is, uh, for those, no, I'm not talking about CSI. Right, or, right. I'm right. Talking, talking about, about public our, speaking. our public speaking and debate program, which is an extracurricular program, as opposed to the others that I, other or areas I was talking about. But it does fall within our arts education program, and I'm quite proud of it because we have a solid middle school forensics program and then we have uh, forensics at the high school level as well. And usually we send uh, students uh, to the national forensics tournament each year and they compete and um, we haven't had any national winners lately, but each year we, we cross our fingers. In fact, we have a group going out not too long from now. Okay. So we're real, very proud of the, our uh, public speaking program as well. Okay. Now, I know when people sometimes think about the arts, they think of, ooh, fun games, oh, life, you know, just really wonderful things in terms of that creative stuff. But then we now have our arts education program kind of interweaves into Common Core curriculum. Talk to us about that. Um, do you want me to go ahead? Okay. <laughs> Katie is so nice. But, Katie, you, you're going to talk with us a little later about some other things. Though. The interesting thing about the arts is the arts uh, can be used as the thread that holds many different things together. Okay. Um, and that's one of the things I love about the arts. You know, um, the thing is, is that when we create something, if we create a dance, it has to be about something. Right. We don't just necessarily create movement and that's it. And so it, it gives us many opportunities to dip into other subject areas and help children really dig in and learn more about a subject area, whether it's in music or theater. You, don't, you, you go to a play about something, you know, and what, if you really want to know about history, try acting out a, a, a scene from some great event. You really mm -hmm. learn what those, the okay. motivation of that character, you mm -hmm. understand what the key issues are, you know, if you look, take a, a, a literary plunge into acting out uh, some, some kind of uh, event. On and on and on and on. So the arts are the connecting piece. They can be. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't want to imply that that's all they are, because the arts also provide great knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, I have to say that, you know, what do they say? A picture is worth a thousand words. Right. Sometimes that's true. Sometimes you can see a piece of art 
that says it all and nothing mm -hmm. more needs to be said mm -hmm. and says it better than talking for 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Makes a statement without saying a word. Mm -hmm. Think of all the wonderful music. You hear it on the radios. And uh, what is the Lee Greenwood piece that uh, proud to be an American? Mm -hmm. I can't, I mean, I can't help it. I hear that, I always tear up. I mean, music has the way of bringing out the emotions and the feelings you have about things, whether they're patriotic or um, anything. So the, the arts really weave in all subject areas and contents. Okay. Now, you know what? When we talk about the arts, now, Katie, we're going to get you. You're on the hot seat <laughs> now. Turn. I know you've, wor you've worked with dance, you said, for about 11 years here in, in the county. And you majored in dance education at, at ECU. Education at okay, county. that's great. And I know we have a very strong um, program here. And I think you told us a little earlier, you said two elementary schools offer dance, but then our high, all of our high schools. Okay. Now, what's required of students in that program? Do they audition? I mean, how does... Um, well, no, now uh, they can come in, anyone can come in to beginning dance. That's mostly freshmen and sophomores, um, but they can enter in as far as their schedule permits that they can come in to beginning. But we do, we have set up, that's what we've been working on this year a lot, mm -hmm. um, is setting up how they are... Uh, their performance is, how, is based on how they go to intermediate, proficient, and advanced, and proficient and advanced are honors level courses. Their progression. Yeah, their progression forward. So, um, no, it, you don't have to audition to get into the dance program at any school. Um, you start in beginner. Okay. And then how you do in that and your progression from there is evaluated. Now, have you seen students come in as beginners with, like, no sense of rhythm or timing or concept of anything and then just end up at some point in time being advanced students. Yes ma'am I have. Really? <laughs> yes. I have I've had uh, young ladies that come in, they're beginning, they've never danced, never had studio training, never danced before, and they are now going into dance ed in college. I've got oh. one that's moved out to LA that's to pursue dance. They they really I have a lot of students that continue or even minor in it or even if they're majoring I have a young lady at NC State that she she's like I seek out anytime I can go take a dance class they have dance clubs and stuff like that so it's something they, they a lot of them keep with them as they graduate and keep going now the different styles of dance I mean what styles are we talking here I mean do we go tap ballet hip-hop blah, blah, blah. well actually the interesting thing coming around county I've seen um, we, we stick mainly with modern dance and, okay uh, or can <laughs> Kids sometimes when they read it in the course book, they think, oh, contemporary, what they see on MTV and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And it's and it's not quite like that. Okay. <laughs> but um, we do um, touch on with the new standards. We have where we can we teach other styles too, some jazz, some ballet, some technical elements that makes when they create movement and they are choreographing and using their creativity that when they do create movement that it shows well on stage when they're performing. Mm -hmm. So I mean, they they work on choreography. That's a big, big, huge part, especially with our evening of dance and stuff. It's student work. It's they put it together. It's their choreography, and the teacher just helps guide them. But tap, I, I don't do any tap because I'm not a tapper. We have uh, once upon a time we had an Indian. She was uh, classically trained in Indian dance, and those her pieces were always, always great. Always beautiful. They oh wow! Beautiful. They were modern dance, yeah, but they really. they, they, they had motifs of other style of uh, a more traditional classical Indian style. Yeah. It was really beautiful. a wonderful that was, fusion. That was, yeah, it was, it was it really was very something to have. And then, like um, just in this past evening of dance, we had um, like an African in, you know, inspired modern piece. But talking about correct, connecting to other curriculum, one of my pieces for my classes was based on like Hurricane Katrina and Haiti earthquake and stuff like that. And it was they they created their movement based on research and watching videos and and things like that. That's and that's good. how they created their movement for the dance. So it's not all just on the dance floor. You've got to sit down and research. Okay. Just, you know, you just kind of think, oh, people choreograph. Hey, let's the group get together. Hey, what, is this a good move or you know? But <coughs> there is. And we allow for that too. I mean, yeah. There's something to be said just to be creative and create dances. But yes, there is more than just, hey, let's just jump up here and make up some choreography and put a dance yeah, together. Yeah, there's research and oh, yes, some thought that really goes into that. Now, you mentioned evening of dance. 
I understand that has become so very successful over the last couple of years. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I mean, I hear. I mean, I in my releases, I always said standing room only. But it I mean, is. that's literally standing room only in a room full of what two hundred odd seats or plus. No, 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 no. Eight. It's more like over eight hundred. Eight hundred. My correction. Yeah. Okay, eight hundred. Oh wow. We need wow. an auditorium with good yeah. stage, with good uh, dressing rooms. With lots of seats. So that's a plug. We need that. Any community partners? Any community yeah. partners? Yeah. yeah. Yes, the evening of dance has gotten to be huge. We um, actually, this past year, we have separated in the fall evening of dance. We separated into two different sites and we sent schools to different sites. And um, But our spring one, it includes the two elementary schools and it also um, includes our all county dance ensemble. So that one's held at Jack Britt, uh, largest auditorium and has a decent, adequate space. To Tell me about it. Tell me about all county because that's, I don't know how many years we've been doing this. That's fairly We just new. finished our fourth. Of all fourth. county all dance? All county dance. We, we started it, uh, everyone else had all county, so we were like, we need to do all county dance. So now what is, what is the concept for, because everyone doesn't know what this the concept from all county dance. What is the concept behind all county dance? Okay, go right ahead. All county dance. Wait, <laughs> See wait, Lydia? Wait. No, I Hold wanted it. to describe it, but there's something really different about all county dance. Okay. We start with nothing. <laughs> We start with nothing, uh, there's no script, there's no anything, and then we bring in a choreographer, a professional, and you take it from there. And uh, either through video or the teachers from the different schools, we get together and we learn from the choreographer, and we, all, we hold audition sites, several schools go to each site, and um, we audition them, we teach them the choreography, and then in groups of four or five or six, they go up and we audition them. Uh, we score their tally their sheets. Each school is represented. Um, rep represented. Uh, we don't have, we have like Jack Britt has three spots and most schools have three. And so that way every program is represented. So okay. then we do that and um, then we, the choreographer works with them over the course of a weekend or several weekends and they put together a piece and it's debuted at Evening of Dance. That is awesome. It that really is, is truly awesome. You know what, ladies, I hate to rush you, but oh, I'm no. looking at the clock on the wall, and I just want to get your last thoughts as far as um, the arts education program, and how can the public support the program? <laughs> Lydia, you want to take us out? Okay, okay briefly, right. take us out. Okay. Um, the best thing the uh, community can do is to come out and see us. Come out and see and support your children. Make sure they're able to get into their arts class. You know, the arts education classes are electives, and they're very popular. And sometimes it's hard to actually get into the classes you want. So we need parent support to make sure that their child's schedule is what they want it to be. That's always good. Mm -hmm. And then uh, support your child. Come see what they're doing. Right. Come to their performances or their, their um, art uh, exhibits and then um, make sure that the community is always there for us to depend on to make sure we're reflecting what the what the community wants all right well said okay thank you ladies I appreciate it we'll have to have you back okay Let's do that. all right you too Katie all right. all right all right okay on behalf of the Cumberland County School System we want to thank you for tuning in to this edition of our show and for giving us a chance to help you get connected until next time